probably very, very likely. Somebody's picking up the phone. Somebody's asking. And if there's just that little in the back of his head, you know what? I, I, I could help them. I still feel pretty good. They still do it with Whitworth. They still at do the, it with um, Whitworth. At the Rams reveal, that, they were jokingly like, and, hey, you want to come back? And much like Aaron Donald, Andrew Whitworth kept himself in immaculate physical condition. Like he, a different type of physique, but he was in pristine physical condition. The question's going to come, and, and he seems to love it so much that – I am not closing the door on no. When Barry Sanders walked away, I'm like, yeah. And here's the other thing: Barry Sanders, and I say this affectionately, kind of a weirdo, right? Just a, a kind of a, a different sort of guy that he was out. I'm like, yeah, I don't think he's coming well, back. Well, he seemed unhappy in Th- football. That too. And I'm I'm sure a great chunk of this was I play for the Lions and they that are a too. clown organization. The Rams are not. He seemed to love football. He, the, he he's not leaving with any sort of bitterness. But here's okay. I guess you can't close the door just given how competitive Donald is and given where he is chronologically in his career, age, you know, kept himself in shape, et cetera. But you talk about loving football. If he leaves now and never comes back, he guarantees that he will never not love football. Mm. You can come back and all of a sudden reach a place where it really starts to feel like a job and you don't love it. And I am guessing, it's purely a guess, that he left with the love still intact. And that, you know, part of the reason, I mean, I've had a few conversations with Aaron Donald, but I don't know the guy at all. But, you know, Jordan talked about how, like, you would see him on the field, and he seemed to be still really enjoying it. Given that he has thought about retiring before, you wonder if this was a year where he's like, I'm going to soak it all in. I'm going to soak in every single bit of this because I know that there is a – serious non-zero percent chance that this is it I, I like the point that emily brought up earlier today too that i the fact that the rams were i think almost by universal account a surprise last year that they were far better even if you're the most optimistic rams fan i don't know if there are a lot of people saying this is a 10 and 7 team that is going to go to the playoffs and oh by the way be probably as good as anybody else in the playoffs when they got there that that they outkicked their coverage so to speak did that accelerate the process of knowing that, hey, now I can leave. The team's in a good spot. Matthew Stafford is back and functioning at a high level. You discovered a brand new star in Puka Nakua. You've got a really good running back in Kyron Williams that is thriving. The offensive line has been solidified, and it's good. Cooper Cup is still wildly popular and very effective. That We're in a good spot. Sean McVay, there's no more of this, is he coming or is he going? He, he's here for the foreseeable future. Les Snead is secure in his position. Like, we're, we're good. I can step aside now, and the organization is in a good spot. It's going to be difficult to replace. You wonder if that had something to do with it, because all of those things that we just talked about, they're all over on the other side of the ball. I mean, look, it wouldn't surprise me if that was a factor, because we talked about this before. He's a lifer. This organization has to mean a lot to Aaron Donald. So he, you know, would he walk away even if he thought it was in bad shape? Because... It's like, this is the time. This is the time for me. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it could have, but I imagine it helps knowing I'm not leaving them in the lurch other than the fact that I'm probably the best player on this team and you have to replace the best player. But that was going to be the case most likely no matter when he left. So I've been dropping some of these stats on you all day that the lists of people that have won Defensive Rookie of the Year, multiple Defensive Player of the Year awards, five or more first-team All-Pros, and won the Super Bowl, that's Aaron Donald and Lawrence Taylor. Somebody that has played 10 or more years and gets elected, uh, selected, I should say, to the Pro Bowl in each season, that list also two names long. That would be Aaron Donald and Barry Sanders. How about this one? Aaron Donald's eight first-team All-Pro selections are tied for the most by a defensive player in NFL history. He has eight. Lawrence Taylor has eight. Reggie White has eight. Bruce Smith has eight. And forgive me, I do not know who uh, these other two guys are, but Bill George and Joe Schmidt. Okay? Donald, Taylor, White, Bruce Smith. All of these guys that were the best to have done these jobs. We both worked with Marcellus Wiley. We both heard an awful lot about how great Bruce Smith was. He was phenomenal. (laughs) I mean, like to put in perspective how great these other guys are, Aaron Donald, Lawrence Taylor, Reggie White, Bruce Smith, 
Bruce Smith might be the worst of them. He's a distant fourth on that list, <laughs> and he is a first ballot Hall of Fame guy. Like one of the best to yes. ever. <laughs> he was incredible. And a distant fourth yes. behind those other three yeah. guys. It is it is an extraordinary career that came to an end today. Pretty 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 surprising for me. I know I, I feel like I'm on an island on this one. Well, but it, I, it caught me this by is the problem, surprise. Travis, you're the only one dealing with the stages of acceptance. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps. Maybe it's that my I took another long walk yesterday, Andy. My knees really starting to bother me. I well now you maybe you understand a little bit more about what Aaron Donald's going through. Yeah, but my walks are my walks are pretty long. <laughs> That's true. It's like an hour and twenty minutes. I've never seen him walk uphill for any of his and training. And a good like maybe thirty percent of my walk is uphill. Mm. Yeah. Do you do you do something that he <laughs> well, did where he, he practices Aaron, with knives? No, I don't do that. That seems uh. that's unnecessary to walk the mean streets of Laguna. Well, that's what Aaron Donald's <laughs> thinking about. He's like, look, when I'm Travis Rogers' age. Do I? Right. Wa- I want to be able to do Travis Rogers' workouts, I'm and that's so, why I got to get out of here. The T. Raj method. I got yeah. up this morning, and my knees were bothering me. And I drove to work, and my knees were bothering me. And I got out of the car, and I walked up here, and my knees are bothering me. I sat down and wrote a long text to Susan, complaining about how much my knees were bothering me. So I'm basically a warrior. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. Uh, like a week and a half ago, I played pickleball with Bergman uh-huh. and a couple other people. One of them is. I forgot her name, but she's with the Rams. And I think Caitlin. She, okay, I believe Caitlin was one of them. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, yeah. no, she she's a good pickleball player. And her mom listens Is to the show. Cindy. No, Cindy's she's her good. mother. She's yes. definitely good. I'm not because so I know that Caitlin was an athlete in high school. I know Caitlin a little bit, and I know that she appears to be competitive. So I'm, now I'm worried that Demarco has a ringer on his well, hands. Well, assuming assuming that I'm remembering the right person because I've only met her one time and I'm terrible with names, but I think that's who she is. Yeah, she's definitely good. Yeah, but I played pickleball like a week and a half ago with with Bergman and them. I've been icing my knee like basically every <laughs> single day. I bought a sleeve. So I'm going to be know playing what it's in a like sleeve to play in the, in the NFL. Yes. This is what we're getting. Yes. At. You play pickleball. I walk uphill. <laughs> Aaron Donald played defensive tackles. And, and we same, did it same. longer than Aaron Donald. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. We'll change gears here a little bit. Um, Lakers have the Warriors tomorrow night. They're still kind of at the back end of the play in. What do we think is going to happen? And if the worst happens, what does that mean for Darwin? That's coming up next. It's Travis Lee, 710 ESPN.
Play fake. Pocket crumbling around him. Strip sack. Ball comes Scoop. out. Loose at the 25. Still on the deck. Samson Abukam dives in. No signal yet. Who got there? We know it was Aaron Donald who knocked it out with his second sack in as many possessions. And the Rams take over inside the 25. MVP. Say it with me. On defense, it's Aaron Donald. That was against Matthew Stafford. That, that it's just and it's a great cut to pick M because I think what's really important about we and we haven't I don't think we've talked much about this so far. Aaron Donald is different than Matthew Stafford because Matthew Stafford in that cut right there is on a different team. And and when it's all said, Matthew Stafford won the Super Bowl here. Matthew Stafford, look, they may win another one. Who knows? But I think for most people, when you think of Matthew Stafford, the first thing that kind of pops in your head was his time in Detroit. He was just there a long time, right? And had varying degrees of success, but he's just there a long time. To become kind of a legend of a place, you neither either need to spend all of your time there or have your very best moments and the very best chunk of your career be in that place. With Aaron Donald, it's both, right? And when you think about... Like the Rams have had great players. The greatest show on turf was one of the great teams. It didn't happen here, right? It didn't happen in L.A. It happened in St. Louis. Aaron Donald, I know he played for the St. Louis Rams, but the vast majority of his time was here doing things in Los Angeles for the only team he ever played for. It's it's just they needed this. They needed their guy that's like, okay, who's the best player of this edition of the L.A. Rams? It's Aaron Donald, and it's not even close. You need you need one of those guys. He's the, he is immediately the guy I think of when if you ask me what was this generation or this incarnation I should say yeah. of Los Angeles Rams football about. If you had to narrow it down to one person, the answer is clearly. Unless you're going to say Sean McVay. I, the only other option Unless is Sean McVay. Unless you're going to say McVay. Sean McVay, the, the only answer other is, option is McVay. clearly Aaron Donald. Yeah, and and, and I, I don't think it's hard to differentiate between a coach and a player. They're, mm-hmm. they're, they have different impacts, but Aaron Donald is unequivocally the Los Angeles Rams 2016 starting their best player, and you're going to be waiting a really long time until you get a better one, and you might never get a better one. Right. And also in that cut, JB talks about MVP Aaron Donald. If Aaron Donald could not win an MVP as a defensive player, like who has any hope of doing that? The last one was Lawrence Taylor in 1986. I was going to say, you know who did? Lawrence Taylor. Right. The guy who changed the game. He changed <laughs> MVP voting. But like, how much does a defensive player have to do in order to win MVP? Yeah. It's like Basically, it's a quarterback award and occasionally someone else. But it's, it's crazy that he never got that honor but he has so many of those uh, defensive players of the year, which is, you know, great for him. Think, think about it. Like, we, we, we do this uh, with LeBron, and we do it with, you know, with those guys. Like, is he the GOAT? Just being in that conversation, whether you like Jordan or, or Wilt or Kareem or whoever you're, that's fine. But you can't honestly have the conversation, a greatest player of all time, and not include LeBron James and not include Michael Jordan and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and these guys. You cannot have the conversation of the greatest defensive player of all time and not include Aaron Donald. You, If your answer is Lawrence Taylor, fine. You're, you're fine. But... Aaron Donald has to be mentioned in the same way that Jordan and LeBron and Kareem have to be mentioned. I'm just trying to find right now, I'll see if I can track it down, how much MVP voting Aaron Donald even received. Like, Emily's right. Like, he's never going to win MVP because that's just not how the league works. But I want to see, like, because if, say, he got every year a handful of votes, that's respect. Oh, yeah. That's major oh, yeah. respect. Well, we're going to get an answer to the question that I, I know I've asked a million times on pre- and post-game shows. I know I've asked in training camp shows. I've asked on my Locked on Rams podcast, all of these things. And it was a question I never wanted an answer to because it was more fun of as a hypothetical than we're about to find out. How good is player blank because he's really good? And how much is player blank really good because he's playing on the same team with Aaron Donald? Yeah. And it, it's impossible to unpack the two, right? Because Aaron Donald's the guy that you always had to prepare for. Kobe Turner is the latest guy to be the 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 the, the blank 
in this question. How good is Kobe Turner? He had nine sacks as a rookie. Well, that's pretty damn good, right? That's like team record good. Yeah, okay. Do you ever think that a defensive coordinator for the other team that they were going to play that week started by trying to scheme to stop Kobe Turner? Do you even think they got to it until week 16 or 17? Probably not. From the moment that Aaron Donald's been in the league, they've been scheming to stop him, which means other guys have an opportunity to go off. We're going to find out how good everyone else is. Okay, I just looked this up because Donald entered the league in 2014. Okay. The MVP voting that year, according to Pro Football Reference, there's only two defensive players who even got a vote, like at all, like who got votes. It was both in 2014, Donald's rookie year, Bobby Wagner got one vote, and J.J. Watt got 13 votes. Okay. Two guys that are going to the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> They're the only defensive guys who even got voted at all, which is kind of insane because I guarantee there are people who got votes who affected games less directly than Aaron Donald. No, no question about it. No question about it. I'm looking at all the basketball going on in our TVs in here. Lakers play the uh, Warriors on Saturday. It just it, it's feeling more and more likely that the Lakers are going to have to beat Golden State in the first play-in game, whether that's at Crypto or whether that's up in San Francisco. We'll see. They, they, they're one and one right now, so Saturday's game is a big deal as far as determining that. And then they're going to have to beat one of the following three teams, most likely. You're going to have to beat either Dallas, Sacramento, or Phoenix in the next game, and that game will almost certainly be on the road. That's to get into a seven-game series where if you get in as the eighth seed, you will likely face the Denver Nuggets. <laughs> if Maybe the Thunder, may, who, maybe, who the Lakers have beaten they, three times beaten this year. Is there a scenario where the Lakers either do not get out of the play-in or do not win a playoff matchup regardless of who a seven-game series again, whether it's OKC, whether it's Denver? Really, it almost doesn't matter who you want to throw in there, where – they're out. They don't really win anything that is significant, and Darvin Ham is back as the coach the next year. I'm increasingly feeling like, and this is just purely my sense of the situation, I'm purely feeling like it's becoming more and more untenable to bring him back under most circumstances other than you get back to, say, the Western Conference Finals again, and you do better than you did last year, or you get to the finals, you win a champion, like something where – on paper, you're like, wait, you're firing the guy after that just happened? Short of that, I am getting increasingly a sense that it's just untenable to bring Darvin back because increasingly over this season, you get a sense that players that's it. on that team don't really want to play for him. That, that, that's it to me. It, it's I, I think Darvin is a likable guy. I think he's working hard. I think he's trying to do the best that he can. But you, I, when I watch these games and, you, you know, you look at body language, you look at huddles, you look at all the little, you know, the, the, the little indicators that you try to assign value to, none of it is screaming, we're with this guy. Much of it is screaming, yeah, I'm not even listening anymore. Well, it's also felt, too, like from, the, from watching these guys last year versus this year, it's felt like Darvin's regressed as a coach. Like, and last year, maybe he was being graded on more of a curve because, A, it was his first year, and B... Russell Westbrook. The way the season <laughs> began last year, you knew, like, okay, there is a ceiling that, they can, that they're going to be butting up against that has nothing to do with Darvin Ham. It's, we have a roster that is poorly constructed, and Darvin's going to have to convince this guy eventually to come off the bench... And there's a lot of, uh, you know, the I thought Rob Palinka did about as good of a job as he could have done last year putting a team together with those constraints. But it was still not a great team. Like, Darvin's got some issues that he has to deal with that have nothing to do with him. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I thought he maintained a lot of buy-in through that process. Yeah. This year, the buy-in has felt drastically lower I think in part because of some decisions Darvin's made, but also, too, there's like – it's it's felt like they expect more from him. Yeah. Like, it's like, okay, you know what? The the waiting period, the grace period is done. 
we are looking for more from you, and we're not seeing it. Well, the, I think that's it. it because, it, it, look, there are obviously some extenuating circumstances here. There's been some injuries to, you know, Vincent obviously has been the big one. Uh, Vanderbilt's missed a lot of time. Vanderbilt's of the biggest of for, all. For, for sure. But if at the beginning of the season, I would have said, LeBron's going to be v- relatively very healthy and play somewhere between pretty good to very good. Anthony Davis is going to have probably his best season as a Laker player. It's certainly his best season since the bubble. D'Angelo Russell is going to have an extended stretch where he's a highly effective player on the offensive end. And Austin Reeves, the guy you gave a lot of money to to become your third or fourth best player, did. You're in ninth or tenth place? Yeah. That's what I mean. Like, everybody has some setbacks. Everybody has some challenges. But if I said the the four most important things that need to go right did, and you're in ninth or tenth place? eh. I mean, I I will say this. I think – my initial instinct at the time would have been if you're going to be without Jared Vanderbilt that long, that's a problem. Okay. Because there's nobody else. To the else. tune of ninth or tenth place? Maybe not to that tune, but I would have said it's going to be a, pro- a bigger problem than I think a lot of people are recognizing because there's nobody else on the roster who can do what he does. And part of the reason that lineup worked getting to the Western Conference Finals was the defensive optionality that he provided Darvin. Mm-hmm. And I think with LeBron, it's a bit misleading because. The numbers are there, but there is a lot of pacing himself through a season that it's understandable, but there's an effect to it. Which 100%. Mean, which means he's playing in – when you take into account both sides of the ball, in a lot of ways he's playing more like your third or fourth best player. Yes. When you, when you factor it all in. Yes. And, you know, Reeves got off to a brutal start. Like, there, there was a lot in there. But it doesn't change the fact that these guys don't seem to be responding to Darvin at all. LeBron's numbers look like LeBron numbers. LeBron's impact on games is not LeBron's impact on not games. on a game to game basis. On, exactly on a get on moments and on nights. Well, absolutely, particularly the period we're in now. The uh, terrible showing against Sacramento, notwithstanding. Ever since the All Star break, LeBron's been cranking it up. Yep, like LeBron is playing much more like the guy that you need someone in the pecking order to be. But, like, to be fair to Darvin, I think this roster is more difficult to manage than sometimes people realize. But he's also made it more difficult with some of his decisions. That's where the problems come in. Have you done Rosebud Rosebud and Thorn with us yet, Never. I'm excited. Well, you're about to do it for the first time. That's next. It's Travis Lee, 710 ESPN.
right strategy. No. Live from LA Live on 710 ESPN. Alright guys, it's time for our new segment. We're going to do Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. It's called Rosebud and Thorn. And so I think that everyone out there, or at least maybe once or twice in their life, have had this kind of like icebreaker or some sort of like corporate retreat meeting thing where you had to say, hey, what was your rosebud and what was your thorn? What was your high and your low from the last day? So we're going to kind of institute it for us and, you know, have some fun with it. So I'm going to start us off. So I'm going to start us off with my thorn. My thorn is that I am not at the South by Southwest Festival because I (laughs) am so jealous of all those people getting to see these movies so early, and I'm so excited. It includes, uh, it includes Civil War, Monkey Man, and Fall Guy. And all these three movies I'm pretty excited about, like big action summer movies. I saw a, uh, yeah. a, a, a billboard for Monkey Man. Wh- yeah. What is it? It's Dev Patel's new movie. He uh, is stars in it and directs it, and it's about kind of like... Uh, it's like John Wick meets India, and he kind of has to get out of. It's almost uh, like a situations. Bollywood John Wick. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, okay. and um, Dev Patel, uh, you know, Slumdog Millionaire. Uh, you know him from um, The Green Knight. He's fantastic. I'm super excited for his directorial debut. It's also from Jordan Peele's production company, which means that it's going to be pretty good. So super stoked, but it is my thorn that I am not there because I am so jealous of people seeing these movies before I can go see them. And I don't want to see the reviews because they're like, this is a masterpiece, and I have to wait four months to go see it. So that's my thorn for today. Um, my, My rosebud is that... Taylor Swift's Eras Tour movie is out on Disney Plus right now with the entirety of her set, the whole three and a half hours. The Archer is there. Uh, Cardigan is there. All of our faves. Uh, right, guys? All of our faves. And uh, <laughs> Sure. Travis is holding a, a showing tomorrow. Guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I can watch screening. it every night before bed as my comfort watch if I choose to. If I choose to. Is this but a it, one particular show or they put together like a They filmed compilation? Um, the first three shows at uh, SoFi. The, so I I'm in one of them, or like you know, my, my, I'm at the your your presence. Be honest, yeah. <laughs> be honest. Yeah. How hard are you gonna look for yourself? Oh, I've already <laughs> seen it twice, and I've looked pretty hard. <laughs> no. Thank so you. like, I know that my show was the third day of the filming, and I, they did all the aerial shots. So any wide shot is my show. Because um, the other shows didn't have the, because again, I was on the side of TikTok. You've done a deep dive. They, this is impressive. Well, yeah, because they were doing it. They're like, okay, here are the cameras at this show, so we know you can tell which day is which show. The close-up ones on the stage, the other, the um, kind of like crowd shots, and then the wide shots. Were you we're wearing the shots. red glasses? You just taught us about the red glasses this morning. <laughs> I, uh, Claire, my sister was wearing the red glasses. I was wearing a different pair of glasses. Um, but yeah, I, I have not seen myself, but I know my general area. So I was looking for my little uh, wristband light up. Anyway, I realized, but it's that now I can watch the Eras tour whenever I want. Uh, Cody, why don't you go next? So my thorn, I'm going to start with my thorn as well. So yesterday, I know we we're talking about Aaron Donald's uh, retirement, but for the Chargers and the Charge- the five of us out in uh, Los Angeles, Keenan Allen got traded yesterday. And Keenan Allen, to me, like as a kid, like I feel like now, since I like kind of work in the industry a little bit, I feel like my fandom has come down just a little bit. But Keenan Allen was one of those guys that I grew up watching and is just like, oh, man, he's like one of the last San Diego players. I think Joey Bosa is now officially the last one. So it was kind of a little bit like when I got home, I was like a little, ah, that feels a little weird not being able to see him in a Chargers uniform. I was going to ask you who, who who hurt you as a child, but you're still a child. Who, who who led you astray and made you a Charger fan? It's funny. So as a kid, I was actually like probably up until like sixth grade, I was a Colts fan. Okay. And that was only because Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning sure. and, and Marvin Harrison were like the best players on Madden, right? So okay. like I was like, okay, like I'll root for them. And then something about the lightning bolt. The lightning bolt. It's a good logo. Like, it's always like I was like, oh, that's so cool. So as a kid, like it was Philip Rivers, Antonio Gates, and Keenan Allen. So that kind of sucked. But my rosebud is after that, I had to take a test, and on my test, I actually got an A on that. Good so for you. What was the what was the exam? Test? Yeah, my high school test. Exactly. Yeah. It was a public health. It was about uh, wash it was like, your hands. It, no, it was about um, <laughs> like uh, alcohol abuse. Oh. Uh, it was actually kind of serious. Okay, yeah. come on, Travis. Yeah, I mean, I'm taking high school education here. All right, <laughs> you got to be a little bit more serious than watch right Okay, <laughs> right. you insist. I remember when I was in like junior high or mm-hmm. some middle school, our school brought in an alum to talk with us about alcohol abuse yeah. and like drug abuse, and this guy, you know, apparently had gone down a pretty pretty dark path with alcohol. 
and was telling us all these stories oh, about yeah. his drinking days. And all of them, like, these sound incredible. <laughs> <laughs> like, this guy lived. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if he'd score for me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm thinking, like, shoulder tapping him. Yeah. Mm. All right, Andy, you want to go next with your rosebud sure. and thorn? Uh, my rosebud and thorn ha- are related, and they happened within about 24 hours of each other. Earlier this week, my daughter had been really, really stressed out and sweating this math test she had coming up, um, seventh grade math. And I spent like a couple days working with her, which was really awesome because A, you know, there's the bonding experience of helping her out with something that she's really worried about you know, reassuring her that it's going to be okay, being a part of that process, knowing she'll hopefully look back on it and remember those moments when dad was there for her. But also, more importantly, it was proof that I could still do seventh grade math, (laughs) which I'm not going to lie, I doubted. (laughs) I tapped out in fifth grade, and I'm not even kidding. I'm hanging in there, but it is by a thread. I was a really bad math student through most of my life. The thorn is... She came back yesterday from this test that she was really prepared for. Apparently, because their teacher had been out all week, the stuff they were given by a sub was not the stuff they were told to prepare for. So she and the entire seventh grade math, like all the kids in all these classes in math, they're all angry right now. (laughs) And I've had to deal with her complaints about the seventh grade math test that she was not prepared for. So everything went full circle. That's great. I love it. So, Travis, you brought us out. Uh, okay. So, my thorn is very obvious. It happened <laughs> three and a half hours or so ago when Aaron Donald announced that, he, that he's going to leave. And, you know, you get an opportunity to watch a special player for a really long time. You develop an affection for that player. And for this particular – the work ethic, the professionalism, the, all, all of the things. It's like there are things that – not just that he sacks the quarter. I admire somebody that goes about their business like that, to be completely sincere, like show up every day, work like crazy, and do a good job that he's – that we're not going to get to see that anymore is a bummer. My rosebud is far less serious but no less enjoyable. When we do laundry – right i take the basket i dump it on the bed and i start sorting it and then i fold t-shirts fold sweatshirts and go go through it right and i keep i keep all the socks over on the side and then when i'm done i do the socks last inevitably something's missing it turns up eventually but it never is every sock has its brother (laughs) perfect sock attendance yesterday Okay. I don't know what it was, but every, I'm like, wait a second. And, you know, the socks have, there's a left one and a right one and all these things. And I'm like, this is perfect sock attendance. I don't know if it's ever happened before. And it put the stupidest, biggest smile on my face. I, and it's that sort of stuff that can make your day. I had to make a run yesterday to get new socks because my attendance has become dangerously low. <laughs> exactly. Right. And you got three, you know, white ones and two black ones and one that's got Homer Simpson and one that's got tacos. It's like, where's the other taco right. one? Where's the Marge sock? And then they never them, line up. They're fraying. Yes. Maybe a hole. Like it, it was a wonderful moment. That is. And uh, it, it set me up for success for the rest of the also, night. Also, I have a thorn of I'm rewatching the uh, Rams Super Bowl win over the uh, Bengals, and I just missed Jalen Ramsey. And yeah. he was just breaking up a play, so that's another thorn. Can I bring up another thorn for you in that sure. specific moment? Weren't you sitting in a spot that was roughly 9 billion degrees Yeah, that day? very close to the sun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was just telling Cody that, oh, I think I see the blob of myself way up there. <laughs> Uh, but I did really enjoy going to the Super Bowl. I'm very happy that I got to go. I remember seeing you at, when we did the post game show after that, and it looked like she'd been sitting in a sauna for an hour. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, because we're in the press box and it's nice and cool. And she was in the auxiliary press mm-hmm. box, which was near the roof, and it was it was way over the 80 hottest degrees Super Bowl that day. on record. It was probably 84 or five degrees. It was. She got the wrong end of the stick. It was a bad deal. Don't miss the Travis Slee show. A reminder yet again that we're going to be live in the city of Anaheim. One week from today, Madness Friday, next Friday, March 22nd, 10 to 1 for the Travis Slee Show at the Pizza Hut in Anaheim, 301 South Magnolia Avenue. Come on out. Not only just hang out with me and Slee to eat some pizza, to have a great time, but you also have a chance to win a 75-inch TV from our friends at Mirror Audio and Television. Nothing but TVs for you to watch all of the games. Yep, it's one of those days at Pizza Hut, plus happy hour specials starting right at 10. Dollar off pints. $2 $2 off pitchers, half price apps, and a $9 express lunch deal, and a whole lot more. Pizza Hut in Anaheim next Friday. It's the Travis Lee Show live on the road. The dump is coming up next. It's Travis Lee, 710 ESPN. 
Hey, I'm Dave Denholm. And I'm Mario Rees. You know us from the LAFC radio broadcasts. Now we have a new podcast called LAFC Plus, and you can find it on the ESPN LA app. LAFC Plus brings you all the latest on the black and gold. Plus, we break down the latest news and interesting stories from around MLS. For all the news, fun, insight, and everything that is MLS and LAFC, join us on LAFC Plus. LAFC! It's available on the ESPN LA app and everywhere you get your podcast. Join us. Time for everything we haven't gotten to today. Yes, it's time for the dump. All right, so let's start with this, Andy. A little bit of bad news before we get to the, the very, very good news. Uh, you mentioned this earlier today, that you grew up in St. Louis as a fan of the St. Louis football Cardinals. Die hard. It was today in 1988 that they moved to Phoenix. I was so <laughs> bitter and I bet angry. they were. I was so 
years ago. <laughs> okay, this is funny actually. Years ago, Brian and I, because we both became NFL orphans. Yeah. At when that happened, like I tried latching on different teams, but never really took because you need an organic reason. Did you try rooting for them in Phoenix, or are you just yes. totally out? Okay. Well, but you got to remember too. A, I was angry, of but course. but also too, it was in the 80s difficult yeah, to root from them. afar yeah. like there you, you couldn't know, see the games right exactly so i mean i would be just like rooting for box scores or yeah. something there was like nothing tangible to root for but years ago for espn the magazine brian and i as nfl orphans got sent to we we pitched the idea of we're going to go to different nfl training camps and have those teams pitch us to be their fan and we went to a bunch of different ones and i chose the cardinals as one of mine originally because i wanted to basically troll them <laughs> have them hide try to convince me but then i would say no and put it in print right but i get, started getting caught up in the nostalgia <laughs> i couldn't help it i started getting super caught up great logo great logo the stadium's really good yep so finally my thing was and i i went to one like a lineman and then coach ken wisenhunt yeah and then eventually the team i said if you can get bill bidwell to apologize to me for moving the team <laughs> he doesn't even have to mean it yeah, but if you can get it. him to do it i will choose the team <laughs> that's great nobody nobody felt comfortable with that ask. nobody wanted to really? run that up no. the flagpole <laughs> no yeah i i could understand i've heard why. he's something of a humorless man I, i've heard he's not the guy that's the the life of the party right no. that's not his lane much better news, Andy. Another thing that happened on March 15th, this happened in 1977. Three's Company debuted on television and became an iconic TV show for people of a certain age. Like, in 1977, I was eight years old, or seven years old, I, and... I remember Suzanne Summers. I remember Jack Tripper and Mr. Furley and the Ropers and the Regal Beagle and Larry Dallas. I remember this song. I remember riding the bike down the boardwalk in Santa Monica. This is so of its time, I can't even tell you. It's the best. Three's Company is the best. It is so entertaining. John Ritter's physical comedy was like at another level. <laughs> Oh, that show was so great. And it had, like, some really bizarre characters. It had, like, Mr. Furley, played by Don Knotts, who w walked around wearing ascots in Santa Monica in leisure suits. As one does. Was a wannabe ladies' man who was terrified of Jack because Jack was pretending to be a gay man living with two women because that's the only way you could do it in You stay away from me, Jack! <laughs> it's just... An insane thing. In in 2024, just the structure of the show is an insane proposition. And at the time, it made perfect <laughs> oh, sense. They, but some Every of the, episode just like him pretending to be gay? It, no. It was only when Mr. Furley would show up. And because you couldn't live with a woman. Course, because that yeah. was Much less forbidden. two. Much less yeah, two. Yeah. So the fact that he was... A, a closeted gay person it was okay but he would only play it up when mr furley would come because around. otherwise they would have been living in sin <laughs> right because right. if he brings home a girl from a date or whatever mm -hmm. and mr furley is there he has to go oh boy. right yeah. right so you couldn't do that but there was also mr furley was wanting to be like a player but he was like 75 years old it was very very strange do you remember that some of the side characters like lana Oh, Lana, Lana yeah, was a bombshell who had a big thing for Jack. Yes. I mean, like, she was all over Jack. Felipe? Felipe was the, the assistant chef. cook. Yes. The, yeah, he wanted he was to kill chef. Jack. <laughs> right, who was always trying to scheme against Jack because he, he wanted Jack's upward mobility. Yes. In the yes. restaurant owned by Mr. Angelino. Mr. Angelino, of course. And then there was Larry Dallas, who was Jack's best friend, who they would go to the Regal Beagle, and they would hang out and get drinks and try to pick up women. Yeah, that ja was every episode. Jack had an obnoxious brother. I who don't remember on, him. Yeah, there was an episode where his obnoxious brother came on the show. Ireland, were you a Three's Company connoisseur? Oh yeah, and you guys are actually forgetting Don Knotts came late after the Ropers. Yes. Yeah. Norman fell. As Mr. <laughs> oh, he was so great. <laughs> Mrs. Roper, Mrs. Ro perpetually horny. Mrs. Roper my own heart. <laughs> constantly <laughs> wanted to, you know, be with Mr. Roper, and Mr. Roper was over it. So M M Mr. Roper never wanted Mrs. Roper to get what she needed. <laughs> I used to love every time Mr. Roper made a joke he thought was funny, he would turn and look to the camera with that <laughs> smile. <laughs>
They had a spinoff. There was a show. The, the Ropers. Ropers had their own show not very, very briefly. <laughs> not no, very not good. particularly and, good. And uh, Suzanne Summers was married to, she just passed away recently. Uh, she was married to a guy named Alan Hamill. And he did Alpha Beta commercials. Oh, okay. And Alpha Beta, for wow. For years, but he was like a Canadian yeah. like talk show host kind of guy. Okay. And he was convinced that she was the reason people watch. And he may have been right. And asked, She was up there. Asked for so much money, and they gave it mm-hmm. to her for one year. So then he doubled down and tried, tried to get it again, and they said, you're well, out. Do you remember there Say was the hello app- to Terry Gar. Uh or you, to Jenny Lee Harrison too, right? Oh, there was the yeah, other two yeah. replacements for just be a Rams cheerleader. Yeah, cousin, oh, wow. on a day cousin, we're all talking about the Rams. Cousin Cindy, yes, and then there then was Terry. Terry. Do you remember though during that period where she was in a dispute over uh, Suzanne Summers over her role and contract and all that? Like it created tons of tension on the show, and they were doing all these episodes where Chrissy was like out of town, and it would basically <laughs> oh, right. just be them talking to Chrissy on the phone. Because nobody could be around One-sided each other. One-sided conversations. Yes. Yeah. Would, there was a there was. I used to love this show called The Good Wife, which starred oh, Julianna, Julianna Margulies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, there was another actress who played a character on the show named Kalinda. Okay. And they hated each other so much that they would they had to have scenes together because it was integral to the plot of the show. But by the end, they would shoot. Like, Trav, they'd bring a camera in and shoot you talking to me, but I wouldn't be here. <laughs> then you would leave, and I would come in, and it'd be me talking to you. That's how bad it got. Lee, uh, Jack Tripper's brother was named Lee. He was Lee Tripper. I, and there was The world-famous Lee Tripper. I have no recollection of I Lee Tripper. I do remember Tripper. this. Also, too, Mr. Furley had a brother who caused insecurity as well. I believe his name was Bart. Bart was Furley? It, yes. Bart. Was it played by Don Knotts where he it was one of those where he played both roles kind of things? So, no. so right when I moved to LA, it's like ninety-five. I I was playing pickup basketball three, four times a week at Sports Club LA in West LA. And my routine was I would uh Mason and I were doing mornings back then. And so I would go to the show in the morning and then I would go to the gym and play pickup and I'd hop in the shower. And it was surreal who I would see in the locker room. And one day I'm in the jacuzzi. And Don Knotts walks in. No kidding. And I'm like, do I talk to him? Do I, I mean, it's it's Barney Fife. I it's, was just going to say. It's, uh, you know, uh, it, it's Mr. Furley. Uh, and I'm thinking, uh, or no, not Mr. Furley. What was Don Knotts' character? Mr. Name? Furley. Oh, Mr. that's The right. Ropers okay. were the other yeah, one. Yeah. Well, right. And, yeah. and I didn't. I passed. And then, like, the next week, Ken Howard from The White Shadow, and I didn't pass on that. I oh, talked yeah, to him. Absolutely. I talked, he was the nice. He passed away, too. He's the nicest guy. I mean, Ken Howard was great. I That's had, awesome. I had two different meetings with John Ritter. Once, um, when I was working at Chin Chin, the one in Brentwood, he came in incredibly nice, very funny. Wait, you worked at the Chin Chin in Brentwood? Yes, I'm Supp- Supposedly where uh, OJ and Nicole used to hang out all the time? Yes. yes. Oh, I saw OJ. John, we haven't been over this before. Okay. That uh, Susan and I lived in an apartment around the corner from that Chin Chin. Okay. We no were in there kidding. All and the, the Kardashians time. were in there all the time, yes. too, right? Andy, there's a. 50 50 chance you served susan and i when we were at that chin chin quite possible <laughs> they, i had a woman one time this, this table of like blue hair old ladies who wanted to know how to get to rockingham and i did not know like i, I mean i don't know brent right. that well well I you know, know now they've sealed it you right. can't turn right off of sunset onto right. rockingham well, and oj's house has been leveled and gone. somebody built a new well, one well at the time though it was still there and yeah these women got angry at me because <laughs> for I not knowing because I couldn't tell them how to get to Rockingham. Yeah, like they were seriously mad at me. Well, tell them to go buy one of those maps to maps stars to homes stars that homes. are every yeah. ten yards. So I have a business proposition because obviously you know Three's Company. Ramona, were you a Three's yeah. Company? Have, fan? have you done the super stager yet? No. Should you do it and then give me your uh, business sure. proposition? Yeah, let's let's do a little super cross talk. AM seven ten Los Angeles. KRDC AM eleven ten Pasadena Los Angeles. It's the greatest segment in L.A. sports radio history. Radio history. Oh, my God. When the shows come together for magic on the radio. It will only grow stronger. Super Crosstalk. Are we ready for Mason and Ireland to join Travis and Slee? Super Crosstalk begins. Super Crosstalk presented by In-N-Out Burger. In-N-Out. That's what a hamburger is all about. It's time for... Super Crosstalk. Woo, woo, woo. By the way, yes. did you see Graham Metzger who went to Oregon walking here with his Oregon sweatshirt oh, after yeah. they beat UCLA by 
two a measly points. A Get your little O out of here, <laughs> Go jackass. Oh. No, I, I, you, no, yeah, no, you deserve it. You won. You, you you, UCLA, coach, USC, right? Stanford, all done. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. Stanford. Okay, oh, can I say can I say something about this? Yeah. So I'm I'm I got a whole long backstory right. here. Okay. Okay. So. When Mark Madsen yes, was an assistant was coach for the Lakers, I got to know him really well. Uh, and he used to come to the back of the plane. The coaches sat in the yeah. front of the plane. He used to come to the back of him because I I'm a notes nut. I I like doing yeah. a play by play by play of a of an NBA game is like an open note test. You can yeah. take whatever. So Mark, when he was, if I had his scout, he'd go, "Hey, Utah's my scout." What do you got on him? And I'd say, I'll send it all to you. I got tons of good stuff for you. And so I just started talking to him, and we became pretty yeah. good friends. And so several years ago, when he was assistant for the Lakers, he went to interview for the Stanford job. Uh-huh. And he was a finalist, yep. but he didn't get it. And they gave it to Jared Haas, who, mm-hmm. who got fired yesterday. Um, but Mark realized, I'm going to have to work my way up as a head coach. The fact that I'm an NBA assistant mm-hmm. is not going to get me into the Pac-12. Got I've got to, so he went to like Utah Valley State yes. or something and killed it. And I knew he was going to kill it because he's he's like super possessed with excellence. Like he's just one of those guys that he never I'll, I'll tell you this, Ramona knows this cuz yeah. she went to school with him. He never should have been in the NBA. He yeah. stayed in the NBA for 10 yes. years because he was an energy guy who outworked everybody. Mm-hmm. So he knew that's what he had to do as a coach. So he goes to Utah Valley State and he kills it. And there's a guy, I won't say his name cuz I don't want to embarrass him, but there's a kid that plays for Stanford now and his dad or his grandfather plays golf at Mountain Gate. So okay. I talked to his grandfather all the time. And uh, I kept telling him, I go, Haas is struggling. They 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 should go get Madsen right now. Yep. He's had two great years at Utah Valley State. Yep. And he's going to get a job and they should go get him. And Haas is, is hovering on 500. He's not getting any recruits. Stanford, Madsen went to Stanford. He would stay there forever and you would win. And he goes, he goes, well, I, you know, we've talked to the athletic department and everything, blah, blah, blah. Sure enough, Cal, of all people, hires Madsen. And he <laughs> kills it in his first year, Cal. Two days ago, they gave Madsen a big extension all the way to 2029. Now Stanford Good fires their him. coach. Ramona, they How screwed they that, that up happen? six ways to Sunday. I know that's your school, but I, I, just, oh, I can't oh, believe. Oh, I have followed this very closely. Yeah. I mean, like, like literally, Mark. so my freshman year was the year that Mark Madsen – to, and Brevin Knight and that went group. to the Elite Eight. Final Four. No, they made it all the way to the Final Four. Final oh, that's four. right. They won the Elite Eight in Anaheim. Exactly. And they went got to the beat Final by Four. Utah and yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, Casey Jacobson yeah. was a freshman on that team, no, right? I don't know. Or was he, was. He, did he I come he later? He came later. Yeah. But it was Madsen, Brevin Knight. Those were the two headliners. And then the Collins twins were freshmen. They were right. my year. Um, and Mike so we, Montgomery was a coach. Mike right? Montgomery. And uh, we had a player named Mike Montgomery as well. So I think. Yeah. Anyway, it was. But Mike Montgomery was a coach. And we had the. We had the greatest run like this is probably the best football basketball run in stanford history right right we had, they're both we, good they're, both yeah. both overachieving well then we went to rose bowls while i was there like i mean i could never be so happy and then it's kind of all gone downhill except for when harbaugh was there but um except for and when, didn't didn't tiger come either right before or right after right that before, too right yeah. before okay so and tiger chelsea clinton there. Uh, that was my classmate. I know she right. was. You've heard lots of stories about my strange <laughs> Chelsea Clinton stalking. Anyway. Um, <laughs> we don't well, there it is. You mentioned the Collins twins. Yeah. Chelsea's best friend is married to yeah. Jaron Collins. Yes, oh, really? Elsa yeah, Elsa. Collins. Okay. Yeah. They're not best friends, but it's in the crew. Yeah. yeah. And uh, she's also now um, best friends with Lauren Sanchez. From I've heard that. That's oh. a good person to be best That's friends with. Right. You get into the Bezos clan. Yeah, yeah. yeah that That's a, a smart deal. move. Yeah. Yes, it is. She's so, managing up very well. <laughs> she's incredible. She, no, Elsa is like, if you don't know Elsa Collins, then you're not one of the cool kids. Yeah, like one day I was like, at Terra. like one of those people. I was at Terra or Pelican Hill somewhere. I'm in the pool. Yeah. And there's Freddie in the pool, Freddie yeah. Prinz. And he's down there with his kids <laughs> and with Sarah Michelle Geller, who he's married yeah. to. And he goes... John, you know Jaron, right? And there's yeah. Jaron Collins in the pool, and Elsa, yeah, she Elsa. knows them too. She's like one yeah. of those people who's just incredibly socially connected. Like she's just, she's just got it together. She's so got did, really good friends. Anyway. Right. So did the Stanford people, like you, the alums, yes. tell people to hire Madsen? Well, yes. Where's the disconnect? Like where, when you have people that know things, right? And like, didn't Jared Huss go to Cal? Yes. So oh. It just gets worse. Like, yeah. you can't take, make take this me up. It. How does he, how does And when? I talked to Madsen at, he was at the Kobe statue reveal, and I saw him and his wife, and they have a bunch of kids now. Of course. And I was like, 
how you know how did you how did we let this happen and and I how, how did, did it happen? He wanted it and, and he and, and he, he goes, Jared's a friend of mine. I would never try to get somebody else's job. I didn't even ask. But you know, okay, no, take take Mark Madsen take and his aggressively trying to get it off the table. How does Stanford not have? And a guy with an MBA pedigree, yeah. A guy that is a hardworking guy, like you and described, alum, John. Who's basically our and mascot, alum, right? And then you, you know? have people <laughs> like you, Ramona, and who knows how many other people saying, "Guys, this person is the person for the job." So, by the way, happen. anybody, all the successful people that went to school with Madsen, like Ramona, would have given money yes. to the school yeah. had they hired Manson, yeah. and they didn't. Well, here's here's what the here's what the issue. Is. So the same thing happened to our softball team, and I'm going to just tell you how this process works. So Madsen was killing it at Utah Valley State. But Jared Haas had come from someplace else that was a little higher up. Right. I forget where he was before this, but he was yeah, at a better a conference run. and he had a good run. So he was like further up the the, the yeah, chain. Yeah, he's farther down the road. Right? And so you would it would have been a little bit more of a leap of faith on Madsen at the time, even though Not like much of a come leap, on, though. man. Like And this and is by our the guy. way, he had Phil Jackson call for him. Yeah. And Phil, they didn't and whoever picked then, up the phones. Why not if you can't get Madsen? Called Jaron Collins. Jaron's an yeah. assistant with the Pelicans now. He was an assistant for those Warriors teams. Also an alum. Also a great coach. So, and and I go, Mark, come on, can, is there anything we can do here? And he, I know you're doing well at Cal, but is it? Can we? Can we? He goes, Jared, and he kept saying this. He's very moral. He would never try yeah. to get somebody else's job. But I will say this: the same thing happened in softball. We hired the wrong two or three coaches in a row. And we had an alum, this girl that I played with. She was a freshman when I was a senior. Her name was Jessica Allister. And she and I, we all kept telling the administration, listen, this is our girl. This is the one. This is the is one. Is she now coaching somewhere yeah, else? She, no. Well, this is what happened. She went to – it was the same thing. She had to work her way up. They didn't believe it at first. She went to Minnesota. She took Minnesota to the College World Series. Then finally, we you know, we kept firing people. Like, right. And we finally hired her. And we were like, thank God. And now guess what? Last year – Went to the College World Series. I'm going to change gears here real like, quick, guys. I want to get your thoughts on this before Andy and I bounce. When you heard the Aaron Donald news this morning, your level of surprise was what? Because Andy was like, First yeah. of all, it took me a minute. I had to watch the video, and I was like, wait, what did he do? It was uh, just a highlight video. Okay. Like, so it, did, it took me a minute to guys, understand that he actually retired. Yeah. I don't know where he is, and I'm not going to be able to reach him because he goes zero dark 30. But yesterday, Mason looked at me, and he goes, why is Aaron Donald trending? Oh. And I went, I have no idea. He goes, I'm, I'm, he's trending, but I can't figure out why. Somebody knew. So the, apparently the Rams knew about at the start of free agency, he told them, hey, this is what I'm going to do. So okay. that they were able to keep it under wraps. Is, yeah. and there were good. some people started to kind of ask around like, hey, why has Aaron Donald not officially said oh. I'm 100 percent coming back to play? Yeah. And that may have been the, the genesis of it. But when it dropped this morning, I... It caught me. It surprised me. By surprise. But you know, it's interesting, Trav. There are there are a handful of people, and you're on this list, that have um, that have argued for the last few years that the Lakers should cut bait with LeBron, mm -hmm. and this is why I hope they don't because, and they might. I mean, LeBron has the option, so it would actually be LeBron cutting bait on them. Sure, but. I think we all take for granted greatness when it's right in front of us, mm -hmm. and and I. I mean, you had even more of a front row seat, Trav, than I did because you were working on the Ram games forever. This guy's irreplaceable. He is. Um, the You could argue it's either him or Deacon Jones is the greatest Rams oh, defensive him. player no, ever. It's Aaron well, Deacon Jones had – they've somebody went back and found Deacon Jones' sacks, and yeah. he'd be the NFL's all-time sack leader I, I understand if they that, kept him. But and, Andy – and I were talking about this most of the day today. Deacon Jones was awesome. I got to know him a little bit as an aside, and he's a super good guy. But I don't think there's passed a lot of away, right? He is. Yeah. yeah, he passed away a bit ago. But I don't think there's a large contingent of NFL people that pay attention to this sort of stuff that's arguing that Deacon Jones is the greatest defensive player of all time. Mm -hmm. The, the right. list is basically three people long. It's LT, Reggie White, it's Reggie White, and it's Aaron Donald. Yeah, Th those are the three guys. So part of me feels very lucky that we got to be here when Aaron Donald held court for ten years. Um, it's going to put the Rams in a tremendous hole because he's irreplaceable. But we got to watch it for 10 years, yeah. and he won a Super Bowl, and he made the difference in the Super Bowl to win it. So I, I feel kind of lucky today. And the play in the NFC Championship to send them to the Super Bowl by right. sacking or getting his hands on Jimmy G on that interception. Were you stunned? Uh, so, uh, okay. Yes, it took me a second to like understand. Like You guys were all texting, and I was like, what, yeah. what does the video say? It's just a highlight video. 
And then it was like on to the next. And I was like, wait, is he leaving and signing with another team? It, t- it took a minute to process what it was. But I guess I, I guess I wasn't shocked because the, we had heard that before. He talked about this after they won the ago. Super Bowl, right? And, he did. And I always think that once you start talking about retiring, you're kind of already on that path. Like it's it's already in your head. And it's just a matter of time. Not unlike LeBron, though, he struck me as one of those guys that not only loves the competition is aware of their place in history, but loves the preparation to put themselves in those positions that is not only willing to do all of that, but enthusiastically. But LeBron, though, has, and I think this speaks to Aaron Donald and deciding to retire, at least some element of it, LeBron has acknowledged it's gotten harder. Right. Like, it is much harder to do this stuff. And you you see some of those cracks with LeBron now. I mean, like, respectfully to as great as he still is, it's not seamless the way it was 10 years ago because, believe it or not, he is actually human. And, and I get, I understand that the tax on the, the physical tax in, in the NFL and the NBA are quite different, but LeBron's been doing it twice as long as Aaron Donald. Well, and the thing about LeBron is, and this is why I hesitate when people say the Lakers should cut bait from LeBron, nobody ever in the history of the NBA has put up numbers like this at this age. I know. It's it. There's. I mean, there's no the, the the previous record for somebody in year 21 in points per game was eight. He's averging yeah. 25. <laughs> you know, it's. I mean, it's just not but even close. So, is, the, the, the I, I guess this is a long like way of saying, and I used to say it about Kobe all the time. You people that call us, and we'll get calls today, and people that'll do this, you that'll say, oh, well, the Rams will be fine, and they'll move on. You you don't know what you have. I don't until think you're going to get many calls about Donald and the Rams. That They'll way. move on, but they're not going to be fine in the short term. He's he, like you said, you're he's not going to get irreplaceable. It's just yeah. what? How are we going to go about this differently? Because you're not finding another one of those. Star effing driven town. There you go. <laughs> Super there you crosstalk go. is brought.